We're talking about anxiety and depression and you're probably wondering why I've been posting all these photos of me painted blue and it's got a lot to do with me trying to build some awareness to those of you on the other side of the screen about something that's very real that a lot of us are suffering. In fact, there's over 3 million people at any one time just in Australia experiencing anxiety and depression. I personally have had experiences with both the above and more on that in other videos. But it led me to um, go and get myself painted blue. I stood there for five hours with three people painting me. I went on to pose naked and do all these poses for you so that hopefully you can share this content around and find it in your heart to go in online and which by following the links above and purchase my Yoga for Anxiety DVD. It's only $30 and all proceeds will go to Beyond Blue. In the DVD, there's a 10 minute guided meditation, a 20 minute seated flow and a 30 minute standing flow. So that's 60 minutes of content for $30, all proceeds going towards Beyond Blue. So thank you for your support. Back to um, anxiety and something that I was experiencing through the time when I needed to for lack of a better word, separate from my husband. Uh, it was over 12 months ago now when things became quite unhealthy. I suppose they were maybe for the, for the lead up in the, in the 12 to 18 months before I left. And I had two very young children and it was a, a very challenging time for me. But I have one thing to thank. And this is why I'm gonna preach the word of yoga for the rest of my life because if it wasn't for yoga, I don't know where I would be. I've often made jokes that I'd probably be a raging alcoholic in a hole somewhere. But you know what? I had children. And I had to show up for them. I also had a whole community of yogis. And I mean like hundreds of people. We get between four to five hundred people through our doors every week here on, at Bedina on the Sunshine Coast. And I was teaching major, majority of those classes. So I certainly was in a come to class and share what was going on in my life. One is that I didn't want to have a, a breakdown and if someone asked me how I was. And two was because it wasn't about me. You know, when my yogis are coming in to, to practice yoga, they're coming in to heal themselves and transform their mats. They don't want to know that their yoga teacher's suffering and I didn't want anyone to know. So I would literally be wiping tears away as I was opening the door and greeting new clients into the studio and I don't know, it was just being on my mat or off my mat, whether I was teaching and so facilitating yoga or practicing, yeah, so whether doing or being yoga, and you can do and be yoga and that can interchange. But yoga in my life helped me through that very dark period. So I'm most, most grateful for yoga. And you're probably sort of trying to connect the two, like, okay, so anxiety is a mental illness and is an an experience. So how is yoga, something that you do physically on your mat, helping anxiety? Well, it helps because what you do in your yoga practice on your mat, you do outside in your life, So and, and vice versa. So while you're practicing yoga, you're able to look at the way you show up, the way you experience the practice of the poses, the way you respond to challenging poses how, is how you respond to challenging life situations. Our breath, simply the breath. When we can start to regulate the breath, we can start to regulate the mind. A lot of us that experience anxiety are shallow breathers. We're turning in here and we're holding everything in. So yoga will help us open up. We do poses at a shoulder and chest openness. We talk about the flowing breath in through the nose and out the nose, expanding into the belly. Okay, and even more, um, even more so, we look and observe our mind. Okay, the mind is such a powerful tool because we know that our innermost thoughts become our outermost reality. So it's not like we just all of a sudden don't feel anger and sadness like I was certainly feeling, guilt, another one. We still feel those emotions. Okay, but yoga teaches us to see it, feel it wherever it comes into the body and to just sit with it. I'm feeling angry. Okay, I'm feeling it in my shoulder. Yeah, I'm really angry. 
Now I'm going to choose in that moment to feed it. I'm angry about this and this person let me down and today's traffic was shocking. I'm angry, angry, angry. See how it can build? Or we can go, there's an angry feeling and emotion. I'm sitting with it and I'm going to let it go because I have the ability mindfully to choose what thoughts I let in. I'm not going to I'm not going to think about the traffic and the people that have upset me today. Yeah, the phone call that I just got off before class, me running late to class. I'm not going to, I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm going to turn my focus and I'm going to look inward and think, wow, I'm so grateful for this life. Look, look at me. Look, I have arms and fingers and legs and hair and eyes and mouth and my heart is beating. I'm breathing. And we can start to focus on all the positive and beautiful things in our life and start to transform. Once we finally learn the tools to cut out all the negativity and cut out all the anger and guilt and these sort of emotions and learn how to combat this, then we can start to live a life we choose. So therefore, you might choose contentment, joy and love. And you do that when you notice the thoughts that you're having and you start to steer them. So you're observing, you're um, choosing how to be, how to show up. So when you wake up in the morning, ding, <laughs> choose. Do I want to think, oh, I've had a really bad night's sleep. I've been up to the children all night. I'm hungry. Oh no, I've got to cook breakfast. See what happens? Physiologically, we turn in and we can just feed that and feed that. Or do we want to think, it's a brand new day. I wonder what is going to happen to me. Anything is possible today. Whatever I am putting out there, I am bringing in. I'm going to find a car park. I'm going to go and do yoga. I'm going to eat really well because my body is my temple and when I'm feeding it healthy, nutritious fuel, I'm feeling good. I'm going to smile today. I'm going to smile, I'm going to chat to my barista, I'm going to chat to the person at the supermarket, when I'm filling out my car, I'm going to say hello to the person next to me. Do you know what's going to happen? You're going to spread that word, you're going to spread the positivity around and that person that's receiving your smiling, it becomes contagious and we can spread it on. So people constantly ask me, you know, how did you do it? You, you, you were going through a separation. How, yeah, they'd look at me and think, aren't you, aren't you sad? Like, you seem so happy and you seem so content. You're so strong. I don't know how you're so strong. It's because I chose to be strong. Not for my, just for my community and for my children and my friends and my staff that are working with me. I chose to be strong. I chose to turn up and be happy because I didn't want to waste weeks and months of my life being miserable and thinking, poor me. And now I look back and I think, it wasn't a poor me situation. That was, that was a, a situation that has led me to this place now. I was probably stuck in a lot of my ways in that marriage and I'm sure I was 50% you know, responsible for, for what happened and in, in, in how we ended up separating. I can take ownership of that. And it's taught me so much more. It's taught me, number one, is to love myself. So if you know that your tank is empty at the moment, more on the love tank soon, start to fill yourself up. Yoga, meditation, waking up, smiling. Buy my DVD, all proceeds go towards Beyond Blue. Feel free to comment, contact me and share this around. It might help somebody else who's suffering silently alone. Namaste.